Now, we all love putting accessories on our four-wheel drives, from big tires, bull bars, rooftop tents, but we often forget about one thing, the part of the car that's gonna make us stop. Here's my current brakes giving it everything they've got. And again at 80 k's. As you can see, they're not great. Just check out the heat off these rotors. If I had bigger rotors, they could dissipate heat way better, leading to less brake fade and increased topping power. Being able to pull up this near 3 ton 80 series a whole lot quicker. And how are we gonna do that? Well, this isn't your standard 80 series brake upgrade. My 80 series is a 1991 model, which means it came out on the smaller brakes, unlike its 1992 onwards family. This meant I could run smaller 15 inch rims, but it also meant this car didn't like the stop. So today, we are changing everything. We are upgrading all the brakes, the rotors, the calipers, the pads, along with all new braided brake lines. We are also replacing the rear brakes with new discs and pads and a fresh set of wheel bearings. And while this modification might not seem like the most exciting thing you can do to your four-wheel drive, I reckon upgrading the brakes is going to be one of the best things I can do to this vehicle. And just like everything, this story starts in our shed. So where do we start? So you might remember I did do a front end rebuild on this not long ago. So I've done all the wheel bearings and all that. So they're all pretty fresh, but we are gonna have to tear down this hub assembly to get the rotor off. So let's go strip it down and see what we're dealing with. So now with the hub off, we've got our rotor. So obviously part of this brake upgrade, we are putting on bigger rotors. Uh, these are the rotors from Protex. These are from a 1992 onwards Land Cruiser. So if you can see there, the size difference um, is pretty big. <laughs> so being a bigger rotor, they're gonna be able to stop the car the heat better. They're gonna dissipate heat way better. And they're gonna be able to fit on a bigger caliper. So we're going bigger calipers from a later model 80 series. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead, get the hub on this new rotor, get it back on the car. All right, and since we're putting on a bigger rotor, we need to change out these backing plates. So these are here obviously to protect the rotor from you know stones or water, all that stuff. But a lot of people don't actually like running them because they reckon they catch you know, mud and stuff. But I've never had that issue. And um, I want to put them back on, not only for you know the protection reason, but they actually space out. They're a part of the spacing, which, which spaces out the whole hub assembly. So you can buy spaces online, or you could cut these down yourself to make them fit. But I kind of wanted a, you know, nicer option. So I've actually opted for genuine Toyota uh, backing plates from a later model 80 series. Now, people want a lot of money for these secondhand. So I went to the wreck, like the wreckers and, and they wanted like ridiculous amounts of money because they want to keep these whole assemblies together. They don't want to just take off one little backing plate and give it to you. So it was actually cheaper for me to buy brand new ones from my favorite site, Partsuk, and get them shipped over. So I got these for, I think I paid just over $50, to $50 each Australian for each one. So it was a hundred bucks to get backing plates, which like, is a lot of money for what they are really. Um, but I just, you know, since I was doing everything else properly, I just like want to get them and make it nice. So we're going to take off this um, dust seal here, take off the back of plate and put the new Toyota one on. Every time you do a job like this, you get a little bit better at it. And being my second time pulling apart the front end, you begin to pick up different tricks from tools to techniques that all help to make the job a lot easier. Now I bought all new gaskets for all these seals but I'm not actually using them. And that's because I'm gonna be pulling this back apart in probably a matter of weeks. Um, I'm hoping to put a front locker in. So I've actually just used some gasket, some liquid gasket, um, just because I'm not gonna be going off road or going through river crossings in that three weeks anyway. And say putting it all back together, then having to throw away these perfect gaskets, pretty much peel them back off again. I'm gonna save these and I'll put them on when I put the locker in. As well as a new dust seal, because that is my old dust seal, but I am reusing it now just for the time being. I then re-grease the stub axle and I can put the hub back together. It really takes you back to the swivel hub days without all the work. I find it funny that Tony does just have a little cap. And it just like stays on too, like you just give it a little hit with a mullet. And it's like, that's it, it don't come off. Then it's important to give the rotors a good wipe to get all the grease and grime off. 
And along with the new rotors, we've got some new brake calipers to go on as well from Protex. So these are double piston calipers. They're actually a bit bigger than my factory ones, obviously to suit the larger rotor. And along with that, we've got braided brake lines to go on, which is awesome. So we'll get these on and I'll show you the size difference between the new caliper and the old one. I was really excited to get the new calipers on because looking at the old ones, I could tell these hadn't been touched in a long time. And to go along with the new calipers, we've got Protex Ultra Full Drive brake pads. Now, a lot of people when they're doing this brake upgrade, they'll actually go ahead and put 100 series brake pads in. That's because on the 100 series, the brake pad is actually uh, slightly thicker. It's so people reckon they get um, a lot more, you know, time out of them than a standard 80 series pad. But because they are thicker, they're really hard to get into the caliper. You can't put in like the anti squeal shims or anything because they just simply won't fit. So they're a bit of a squeeze to get in. So instead, I'm just going with the 80 series brake pad and that should fit in, no worries. All right, so now we're installing some new brake lines because as much as these are all currently okay, um, they are, you know, slowly wearing out. I don't think they've ever been changed. So I decided to get some new ones. Um, these are from Protex. These are their braided brake lines. So these are actually a bit extended to suit my two inch lift. So that's why they're a bit longer. We've also got ones just from the brake back to the um, axle there as well. So the reason why you'd choose a braided brake line over your standard factory rubber brake lines, one, these are obviously more resistant to wear and tear, especially if you're driving this off-road through scrub, um, punches for rubber brake lines are common, they do happen. So having braided, you have a bit more toughness that you're less likely to you know, get leaks, cracks, wear and tear like that. Secondly, they don't swell under heat and pressure like rubber can, especially when you start doing longer distance hosing for a big lift. Um, that's something you want to keep in mind. They are a little bit more expensive than your standard rubber hosing, but if you are redoing them all, especially on a vehicle this old, and for what it's going to be doing, I think braided is a good option. All right, so the front is all back together and all looking schmicko. So now we're ready to go ahead to the rear, because the rear, we still got to replace the brakes and we got to do the bearings. So let's go into that, and then we can get the car back off the hoist and test it and see what improvements have been made. And now because I'm stripping it down to the bearings, I'm going to drop the diff oil. Oh yeah, out she comes. This was actually my first time doing the rear wheel bearings in this car. And while it might sound like a daunting task, there's actually not much to it. All right, now with the hub stripped down and our old bearings and races removed, we can install our new ones. So I got a kit here from Terrain Tamer, um, WBK3 wheel bearing kit. And I've also got genuine Toyota uh, inner axle seals for the rear. So they'll go in, new bearing, new races go in. And um, yeah, we should have had this thing back together pretty fast. Get our new rotor, new rotor on. And um, yeah, we're looking good. Now previous to this, I had done my front wheel bearings. This wasn't a complete alien task to me, but I still found it really useful to follow a YouTube tutorial just to keep me on the right track. And the videos from Second Gear Low are second to none. So definitely check out his channel if you're looking for some help. I replaced my axle seal, reassembled the hub and set it back on the stub axle. We could then install our new Protex slotted brake discs, which were the same size as our previous brake discs. Now that the hub was back together, we need to set the preload on the bearings. This requires a special service tool from Toyota, which we didn't have. So in Aussie Arbo's fashion, we fabricated one. Using bits and bobs from the shed, it wasn't long until we fabricated our own special service tool, Aussie Arbo style. With a half inch socket welded on the end, we could attach a torque wrench and set the bearing preload to spec. We could then reassemble the rest of the hub, check our wheel bearings had seated correctly, put on our gaskets from our terrain tamer wheel bearing kit, and then finally put the axle back in the car. We could then install our new braided brake lines for our rear disc calipers, and install our new brake pads and then rinse and repeat for the other side. It's also really handy to have the factory service manual on your phone so you can check all the torque specs when it comes to torquing up your bolts. A quick tire rotation and handbrake adjustment and it was done. It was ready to go back on the road.
So now the new brakes are on the car, the first thing we've got to do is bed the brakes in. The worst thing you could possibly do is get brand new brakes and then drive and slam on the brakes instantly. You've got to wear them in evenly, creating a smooth and even layer between the brake pad and the rotor. Now it's really important that you do this because this is going to help improve your braking performance and help your pads and rotors last longer. All right, so how are we gonna do this? Well, first we've got to find an open stretch of road because we want to be in a, doing this in a repeatable manner where we can go from say 80 to 100 Ks down to around 15 kilometers per hour. Now, we don't want to do a, any hard stops. We don't want to come to a complete stop because that's not good for the bedding in process. All we're doing is first getting the brakes up to temperature and then we're going to control brake them in in order to get this even wear across our pads and rotors. Now, I'm gonna do this about 10 times, and it's really important that you do take the effort to do this because it's getting the most out of your brakes and rotors and ensuring they're gonna last the longest. That's feeling better already. And once I'd bedded in the brakes, we could finally brake test them and compare them to our old factory brakes. The brakes were in fact that strong that if I wasn't careful, they could actually lock up the front wheels entirely. Just have a look at this footage. Beforehand, my foot flat to the floor, I could not get the wheels to stop. But with the new brakes, if I push hard to the floor, these wheels will literally stop in their tracks. And this is because my early model 80 series doesn't have ABS brakes, so it is something to be careful with. But it goes to show the braking strength I now have with these Protex brakes and those bigger rotors. Now looking at the temperatures, we're going to see that the larger discs remain cooler. It's hard to have a perfect side-by-side -side measurement due to environmental factors, but if we compare the hub temperature, we can see even when the car is working harder, the larger discs are staying cooler, allowing the kinetic rolling energy to be transferred into heat and thus slowing the car down. Well, I'm pretty happy with those results. As much as it was a lot of work pulling off all the rotors and brakes, you know, you can't notice any difference from the outside, but when you're driving the car, you do notice how much better this thing pulls up. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, get subscribed, and we'll catch you in the next one.